Hello, my name is Chase Madison, and I'm here to demonstrate uh, Python slash PyMail. And to do so, I'm going to create a small graphic user interface inside of Maya. Uh, I chose Python because it is much more versatile in terms of platforms. Um, you can use Python in 3ds Max and as well as other Autodesk products. And it seems to be more of a language that is being used much more frequently in the industry. I could have coded in Mel, but since Mel is uh, more specific to Maya, um, it left it less ideal, so therefore I'm teaching Python. Um, so in order to get started here, I basically have uh, the very first command that you always need in every single Python application that you ever create inside of Maya, which is import maya.cmds as cmds. Now this is this portion here is basically the import command. Um, if you're using Maya 2011 or 12 or anything above that, you obviously have the dark background. I have that background, but I'm a little bit afraid that it's not going to show up in YouTube, so I decided to stick with the 2010. So enjoy bright white and gray. Awesome. But uh, this command right here would be color coded. Uh, it'd probably be, I think, green maybe? Uh, I don't know. It's been a while. So, um, import Maya is Maya dot. Everything before the dot is actually a module, and a module is basically an object that's been stored in another file. It's kind of like a class, but it ho holds information, and Maya has one. And we are calling upon the CMDS function inside the module Maya, and we are storing it into the CMDS. Well, that's the advanced version. The short version is. Um, you basically need it. And this is going to be your staple for all your commands. Now it doesn't matter what you call this. It could be MS or MDS. It doesn't matter, but for the most part it's CMDS. Um, just a standard, like a universal standard that everyone uses. So I'm just going to stick with the flow and keep it as such. Now first we're going to create a window. In order to do that we're going to use our command that we have here already established as cmds and then we're going to type dot now every time you reference a mail command in this case of creating a window we are going to be using mail command to do so you need the cmds dot so for the command itself is actually window and I, I just happen to know it offhand but a lot of times I don't so if I don't I'll just go to the help and then I'll go to the python command reference and it will pull up the, uh, the the general list and it'll be the all commands one so it should look you should have a big list something similar to this everything related to the windows are actually stored in these little nice little categories here and the windows everything you need to know about windows can be located right here so if I click windows I'll have a nice list of all the commands via the windows so in my case I'm going to select window and you'll notice that the command actually has the word window and it doesn't have anything in front of it like the cmds dot you know and then window like we have here so it's kind of important that you remember that for every python command uh, well technically it's pymel but it's not in the semantics but um, for every command that you do inside of python you need to make sure that you have the cmds in front of it as long as it is a mail command if you're doing something like defining a function or creating a class, you're not going to have a CMDS in front of it. You're just going to have uh, your traditional Python code. So, um, basically, any command that you find here in this massive list will require a CMDS, and that's basically uh, a PyMail, well, Maya's way of interpreting the commands into Python and storing it in, as such into this so we can use. So let's get on with it. Um, after the window has been created you need to type cmds dot show window to actually show the window. But right now it's not it doesn't know what to show so we need to name our window. Now in order to name the window I'm going to go inside the parentheses here and I'm going to type two apostrophes those are apostrophes and then I'm just going to name the window. In my case I'm going to type uh, test window GUI and that should be fine. Then I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to copy it. 
I'm going to paste it here and make sure that the apostrophes are around the edges there. And now I have the window, it's creating the window, and then we're showing it. And then we're going to build everything inside the window. But first, we need to make sure that the window isn't created. Um, if the window is created and then we go and close the window inside of Maya, let's just say we ran it right now, it would work. And then we go and close it, it's actually still visible and it's still taking up memory. That's because we don't have a deletion window here. So we're essentially, every time we would run the command, it's actually renaming the window with this plus a number or whatever weird uh, default naming scheme that Maya wants to use. So in this case, we are going to go ahead and eliminate that problem. And we're going to type if, and then we're going to type cmds window, and then we're going to type the parentheses, and then we're going to type uh, the two apostrophes and then the window. So if so, it's looking for this, and if it occurs, if it's there, if it sees it, so that's a comma. We place a comma right after that, and we say exist equals true. And then after the end of it, we're going to put a colon. Because basically we're just defining a uh, kind of like a loop, but not really, it's not a loop because it's an if statement. Uh, but we need to make sure that we indent. So if it sees that uh, cmds.window, the name of it is test window GUI. If it finds that name and it's true, then it's going to run this command. And I just happen to know that this command, and the command is cmds.delete UI followed by the parentheses, put my apostrophe as well as the name of my window inside of it, comma, and then we're going to type window is equal to true. Now you're probably wondering how I got window and how I knew to use these two type of commands. So I'm going to briefly just go into the my help and show you exactly where they came from just so that you don't have to know why I'm using these commands. Um, so as you can see here I have the command delete UI already brought up but you can easily go to the my help in case you need to at, inside the script editor go to help Python command reference and then you should get a big huge list and then you can find the D or go to the windows and find the command that I'm referencing here. Now Inside here is kind of the general syntax for each one of the flags, as they're called it. Every command has a flag, and it's used to edit the properties. In this case, I want to edit the window. The delete UI, although it does mean the UI means user interface, it can be a little bit misleading. You might think, okay, it's only deleting the window. Well, not necessarily. It does some other things too. It can delete controls and menus and menu items and collections and all this other stuff too. So try not to get too confused when you're trying to edit everything. But in this case, I'm going to be doing the window. And I could, in this case, I typed the whole word window, but I could also use the shorthand, which is WND. Um, I specifically used the long version just because I didn't want to confuse anyone. But um, so the object in which I want to delete is here. I said WND, it is a creation type, which is why it's blue here and it stands for create. And the argument type is a boolean or boolean whichever way you prefer to pronounce it. Uh, so that means this true or false statement. Um, so for the most part I'm basically saying I want to delete this window and I want to say that it's true and that, that it would delete and then over here uh, obviously you have selected well named the window in which I want it to delete if this exists. So now I'm just going to highlight everything and I'm going to press enter on the number pad and I should get this and this is my window. Now, as of right now my window has no parameters other than the name so if I keep doing this over and over again you're going to notice or at least it should All right, see now it's massive there like no matter what size it is um, as long as I keep running it, um, if I edit or change the window in any shape form, so let's say I like this sort of window, it's 
going to go to some weird default uh, window per setting parameters. Um, normally if I don't have this, or there might be some sort of altercation, I'll get windows of different sizes that just randomly appear. Like like Maya just randomly generates uh, uh, the, the height and width. So we basically need to come back over here into our window and define the height and width. And I just happen to know the height and width offhand because it's the easiest to remember. It's just like math, H and W. So H uh, is equal to 200, and I'm going to say width is equal to 400. Make it a little bit bigger, just so you can see. And with each flag, you need to have a comma afterwards, and it needs to be at least kind of coherent. It doesn't. The spacing in general doesn't have doesn't matter. I could have it like this. I could have it like this or this. It just doesn't really matter. But mainly since I'm OCD, I like to keep uh, the things kind of neat, just for my sake. Um, so anyway, we're gonna go inside the window itself, and we're actually gonna create uh, some different types of uh, objects inside of it. Mm, text field. And I just happen to know all these. And you need to make sure you have your parentheses within here. Like so. So each one of these have their own little features. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as is just so you can see it. And let's see. Okay, I just basically uh, tried to run my code, but I'm kind of slow sometimes. Um, you need to remember that Windows and everything inside of a graphic user interface actually has a parented scheme. Um, so in this case, the window is like, kind of think of it like a bracket. Now if you had a an editor such as, I use Notepad++ uh, for, as you can see like here has has like the, the brackets and it, I can like minimize and stuff. It has like these little lines. I don't know if, you, if YouTube will pick that up. But basically you can, it kind of tells you when things are like that. Um, but basically it's kind of like a parent, a hierarchy. Um, so for the window to work, you need to establish the hierarchy. And to do that, we're going to use column layout. And then we're going to use the set parent. Set parent. Okay, now the column layout basically establishes a column inside the window, whereas the set parent basically stores all these objects up until it reaches the set parent. So since this is the column layout, it's going to go down one by one, and then it says, okay, it reached the set parent. So everything above this needs to be stored into, and this command right here basically establishes the previous hierarchy. It's kind of like a directory going back. So it, since the column layout's the one that uh, has the is the main parent, it's going to set the parent inside the column layout as such. Now, if I had like additional ones, I could uh, cr create this. Um, to be named something kind of similar to this. So I can say the set parent is test column. And I honestly don't think you need the parent the apostrophes. I'd have to double check. But and but here you would test column like such. And then you would find that. So if you have like advanced hierarchies, you can just do that. But um Again, I'm not quite sure of the syntax because sometimes I test it over and over again. So, just, but it's something similar to that. Um, so anyway, um, let's run this. It says uh, name column layout is not defined. That's because I do not have my CMDS. So once again, you need to have the CMDS. And it's very important to forget sometimes. So I ran the code and now I see my, my box here. You can see my button, and it labeled it button 17. I now have a checkbox, and then I have my text field group. Now my text field group is basically a text, and it's storing field variables. Um, so, but I can—it doesn't have to be necessarily a field. It can be strings, whatever. 
Uh, that's just the name of the box. The group itself is actually the word group.